farm has been on high alert because we've had a black bear sneaking around. Well, it serves you right. There was most definitely a very large black bear wandering. <laughs> You are not going to hunt your way out of a problem with a predator on a farm. You know something, when a bear comes and visits you, you're gonna really think it sucks. Today's video is sponsored by Ridge. Good morning, barn cats. How's everybody doing? I got Ginny, I got a very cranky Molly Murder Mittens, and I got Mr. Pablo. I also have this camera that I can stick on any one of these barn cats. Ginny, do you want to be the one to wear it? Okay. Come on, barn cats, we have a busy day ahead of us. Good morning, Abby dog. How's it going, sweetie? Come on out. Let me see your band-aid. Come here, sit. Let me see this band-aid. Okay. Good girl, all right. Let's change your bandage. You did a good job not licking it. I'm very proud of you. Ah, I know, I know. I'll give you five, I'll give you five. Yeah, good girl. Get the gauze pad out. Put some antibiotic ointment on there. Don't lick, don't lick it, please. I know, you don't like it, but it's part of the deal. It's the only way your cut's gonna get better. Come on, Abs, let's see what Toby was barking at, huh? Hey, Toby dog, what you barking at, huh? Something got his attention. So lately the farm has been on high alert because we've had a black bear sneaking around the farm. Just a few minutes ago, there was a black bear up here. It was basically right up against the fence line right over where my finger is pointing. I was down below, kind of near where the gate is and where you can see the dogs right now. I whipped out my phone as quickly as I could and tried to catch a good shot of it, but unfortunately it wasn't very good. The dogs are very upset and they're very focused on that area over there. So my hunch is it might have run down this woods line down that away towards my neighbor's house. I tried to get up here as quickly as I could to see if I could get a better glimpse, but no such luck. But I will say from the video I did shot, there was most definitely a very large black bear wandering the farm. And when I say black bear, I mean like a big, big black bear. And so over the last couple of days, I've very much noticed that the dogs have been on high alert and particularly Mr. Toby Dog has been getting very, very protective. I hope it's not a problem. Oh, would you look at our wild gooselings? They're growing up and getting so big, they're really enjoying this pond. How's everybody doing this morning? I think the babies are still sleeping. Let's see what we got underneath here. We got all sorts of little baby chicks running around. Isn't that right, Abby? Look at them. Yeah, our new baby chickens are doing wonderful and they are eating, they are growing, and they're also really easy to take care of. So things are good so far. Even though I'm pretty certain that if Abby got the chance, she would use any one of them as a chew toy. Isn't that right, girl? Turn this switch, and then we're gonna turn this switch. Turn on the pump, there we go. Molly Murder Mittens is definitely the cat that likes the dogs the most. She's got a good relationship with both Toby and Abby. Good morning, Jemima Puddle Duck. What are you doing? I'm noticing that Jemima Puddle Duck is starting to show signs of her age. She's actually the oldest duck on our farm. She's about, I don't know, seven, eight years old maybe. I don't even know exactly how old she is. She was actually given to us by some neighbors who didn't want to keep ducks anymore. She and her husband Samuel Puddle Duck, who has long since passed away. But her breed of duck is actually the Jumbo Pekin. And so that breed often struggles with growing old. She's definitely showing signs of that struggle. I've been actually doing my best to make sure she's taken care of and doing okay. So far, her quality of life doesn't seem too bad, but she definitely is not on the upswing right now. And that kind of makes me sad too. Which, when you kind of come to the truth of the matter, it's sort of a fact of life, but it doesn't make it any less sad. <clears throat> Plug that in. We all have our spring, summer, fall and winter. And while sometimes you're in midsummer and it feels like it's impossible for winter to come, we need to recognize that winter will inevitably always come. Let's go check on the heifers, huh? Morning, girls. 
So it seems like their water trough is working pretty well. This water line that you see here, it's actually the same water line that you saw me turn on a few minutes ago. So here's the black piping that runs through here. There's the green hose that's feeding the heifer trough. I know I've said this before in other videos, but it's a major labor saver. How are you doing, Bonnie? Good to see you, Belinda. Good girl. I don't have any treats this morning. But I did want to say hi to you. Oh, okay. I got it. Consent is an important thing. And no, I don't say that as a joke. It's actually really important. Whether it's people or animals, you don't want to go just jamming your hand in their face unless they want you to jam your hand in their face. Yeah, it's amazing. They're getting big. I mean, they're not quite as big as their moms yet, but I could definitely see that by the end of this summer, they would be ready to be bred. But I won't breed them until next summer because if I like started to try to have little baby calves get bred like over the winter, the timing would be all off and it would not be good. I don't know. Maybe I should steal the title of this video from a bird song. There is a season Isn't it funny how Toby knows how to go through the doggy door and comes and goes back here as he pleases? Well, meanwhile, Abby knows she's not allowed back here. Yeah, you're the guardian of the birds. I've actually kept Abby down in this lower pasture as she's dealing with her injury. It just makes it easier for me to keep an eye on her. Plus, particularly with that black bear on the loose, I don't really want her out and about on that upper pasture alone while she's injured. I know that might be overprotective and molly coddling of me, but I don't know. I love my dog and I don't wanna see her get hurt and I wanna put her in positions where she's successful. Plus the other issue I've had is she keeps escaping. You know, when Abby Dog was a puppy, she was a master escape artist and that behavior has definitely continued on through adulthood. So one of the questions I frequently get from folks is, what's your EDC? And well, with a big thanks to today's video sponsor, Ridge, I'm gonna show you guys what my everyday carry is. So here you go, here goes the big reveal. Obviously cell phone is a must. Some keys you gotta always have. Can't be on a farm without a multi-tool, but arguably the most important thing is my Ridge wallet. And so yes, these are the things that I carry with me every single day here on the farm. And I gotta say, I've been using this same Ridge wallet for several years now, and I absolutely love it. It's slim, it holds up to 12 cards, it's got a little money clip for my cash, and it keeps me out of the George Costanza a territory with how my wallet used to look. This Ridge wallet is also designed with special RFID blocking technology, and that will protect your credit card information and other valuable information from sniffers. You know, those people who might use special technology to steal your payment information. And I genuinely love the cool minimalist look of the Ridge wallet. In particular, my style of choice is this titanium, but there's more than 30 different colors and styles to choose from, like carbon fire, burnt titanium, forged ember, and burnt Damascus. For example, a friend of mine's birthday is coming up, so I just got him this brown leather version as a gift. And you can also always upgrade your Ridge wallet. Like later today, I think I'm gonna take this AirTag attachment and I'm gonna use it to replace my old money clip. That way I'm never gonna have to play the classic game of, where's my wallet? What did I do with my wallet? Where did I put my wallet? I play that game way too frequently. And you know, Ridge is so confident that you're gonna love their wallet that they have a 99 day guarantee. Test drive your Ridge wallet for 99 days and if you don't love it, you can send it back for a full refund. If you wanna save 10% on your own Ridge wallet or Ridge accessories, be sure to use my coupon code and click the link right down below. That's ridge.com slash goldshaw farm. And thank you Ridge wallet for my most favoritest wallet I have ever owned. Catnip patch is flourishing. I'm very excited about this. All of this is catnip. The goslings are starting to do a better job of helping me control the weeds. They did a video a couple weeks ago when I first got back from Los Angeles, the weed situation was out of control. It's still kind of crazy back here, but I actually want it to be crazy. You know, having too many ducks and geese and chickens in one area really negatively impact this part of the farm. And so part of what I'm trying to do with all this crazy amount of weed growth is just really let the soil help heal itself. And part of the way that soils often heal themselves is by having a variety of weeds, like even this thistle, which I know I'm not gonna want, so I'm just plucking the seed head here. You know, those weeds are bringing up various nutrients and minerals from deeper in the soil. They're creating organic matter that's gonna help provide bedding for future things like grasses to grow. And so, yeah, this is a summer where I am just intentionally letting weeds go crazy, but with a long-term plan in mind. Oh, bloody hell. 
still have a handful of goslings that still escape. Hey, don't you guys go anywhere. Go, 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 go. Back in, back in. Yeah, I don't know if you saw it earlier, but like I had like a cage and a bucket blocking the gate. That's so they don't slip underneath the gate. This handful of birds are still able to do it. There's, I don't know, probably about a dozen of them who are small enough to still be able to do it. When I have the cage in place, they can't get out. When I don't have the cage in place, this is what I get. Come on, you dingus. There's always a slow one in the group. Time to feed the piggly wigglies. Big, 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 big. Big, 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 Come on, girls. Yeah, with the recent rains, the mud situation over here is getting out of control. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to actually move them down here in this direction very, very soon. That'll probably be a task for next week because I feel like they've stayed their stay in this spot and now they're ready to move on. But I will say that the mud is definitely helping them with the hot temperatures. They seem very content about that part of it all. All right, Abby, I'll see you in a little bit. Yes, it is ridiculous that I still do shots like that because like you realize every time I do one of those shots, I have to like stop, get off the bike, pick up the camera, and then continue on. But that's where the reality is, as just one guy working on a farm making videos all by myself, it's not like I'm followed around by a camera crew, and so I have to be my own camera crew. And usually I just fix that stuff in editing. I will admit, I'm a little sad that I can't bring Abby along with me. She just doesn't seem to be bouncing back from that cut nearly as much as I would think from like such a minor cut. If I don't see a marked improvement in the next 24 hours, she's going to the vet, no doubt about it. You guys look at that. Something really gouged into here. It's like too perfectly straight almost to be an animal, but I have absolutely no idea what it would be. It's not like it was us up here. Like I don't think a bear would do something like that. You know, it's funny, actually last night even, I ran into my neighbor, Bruce, who shares like a back property line with me over that way. And he was saying that the bear was actually over near his chicken coop and his wife had to scare the bear away. And I don't know, maybe it was a bear. Probably figuring out how to get into my pasture because it definitely doesn't like to hit the fence that I have around here. Even though the footage that I took the other day, that grainy Bigfoot style footage, probably had the bear somewhere, I don't know, at one of those fence posts right over there. So it can get in here if it wants to. The bear, the bear in the maiden fair. It's the bear, it's the bear in the maiden fair. I will say I'm feeling like I get the hang of how to bike and talk on the camera at the same time much better than I used to. Look out Casey Neistat because I'm coming for you. You've got your boosted board and I've got my e-bike. And I just lost the microphone on my camera. Ah! Oh no. <laughs> that might have been the greatest example of hubris ever. As I'm bragging about my skills with the camera, I lost the microphone on my camera while I drove over what looks like a woodchuck hole right here in the middle of the pasture. Maybe I got some more work to do here on that one. How's everybody doing this morning? No bears bothering you, is there? Eh, you guys seem okay. It does look like you ate all your food. Don't worry, I'm here to hook you up. And with that tiny camera, we will observe the chicken behavior. Let's check the egg factory here. Mm, we got a couple so far this morning. Refreshies. This is the clutch of eggs I collected last night. These are the ones I've now got this morning. I don't think I'm brave enough to bring this whole basket down with me on the e-bike tonight. So uh, maybe later tonight when I come up, I'll actually come on with the side-by-side -side because I have to move the chickens anyway. So I might do that tonight. Good morning, Moo Crew. How's everybody doing this morning, huh? Ready for some fresh pasture? So here's another example of just some of the slight things we've been dealing with because of the flood. So this section of pasture was just kind of ruined because this is where the cattle were. They were actually on this strip when we had the rains and this is a soggier part of the pasture and so it just got destroyed. It's not really that big a deal. It'll grow back next year. But for the time being, I'm keeping them far, far away from that spot as well as really all the edge of this side of the pasture because this is where the soil turns a lot marshier than in other places. Oftentimes folks have been asking me, how do I get water to baby Beatrix when I'm using this big one? And the answer is, I usually just dump a couple buckets in there for her every day. So that she can drink from this tub while everybody else has all this water supplied. As you can see, as soon as I take the water out, the hose starts to fire. Hey, Kels! Come on, Kels! Hey, Kels! Come on, Kels! Fresh grass! 
Здраво! Now I know that there's gonna be some folks who hear me talking about the fact that we have a bear wandering around the farm and say, well, it serves you right. Because as longtime viewers of my YouTube channel will recall, I've had a number of run-ins over the years with folks who hunt bear, particularly folks who hunt bear with hounds, and I've been a rather vocal proponent of changing the hunting laws here in Vermont to respect the rights of private property owners and allow them to prevent having hound hunters from coming onto their property. The hound hunting laws of Vermont actually trample all over the private property rights of landowners like myself. But that's probably a whole other video. But what I think is relevant is the fact that, yes, I do have a bear around here, but I actually don't see it as a bad thing. I see it as a good thing. I take it as a sign of the fact that we're promoting good biodiversity and we really are managing our farm like the ecosystem I aspire for it to be. You know, the fact that we have those bear wandering around those woods back there actually suggests to me that those bear are helping manage the berry bushes and helping spread seeds and helping turn over trees and actually disrupt things to ensure that we get a good diversity of plant life scattered throughout our forest as well as our pastures and for me as the farmer it's really on me to ensure that I have proper security and fencing to protect my animals and my farm unless your goal is total eradication and extinction you are not going to hunt your way out of a problem with a predator on a farm you are far better off by just finding ways to coexist peacefully and standing out here in my pasture with my cattle listening to the birds and the buzz of a summer morning I gotta say does feel pretty quite darn peaceful out here. You know something, Boy. when a bear comes and visits you, Boy. you're gonna really think it sucks. Boy.